Has Bitcoin reached a local bottom? Will altcoins continue higher? And how are the macro charts looking? These are questions we're answering in today's video. Let's dive on in. Okay, Miguel team, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. In today's video, we are diving deep into the short term and the macro price action, discussing what is happening on the charts, whether or not the bottom is in, and exactly what the bulls need to do to regain control. We'll also be taking a look at the total market cap and the total altcoin market cap in today's video. Before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit that comment button, and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical, and the structural information. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. That is the kind of content you are interested in. Join us on Telegram. It is the first link down below. You'll get access to charts, updates, videos, educational posts, news events, and everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency with Bitcoin and the relevant economic news. If you are interested in taking your trading to the next level, join us on VIP. With nearly 700 members, we post trading setups with exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses, trade justification, exclusive analysis, and so, so much more. You'll not only get access to all of our posts, you'll also get access to our group chats, our general chat, our trading chart education chat, our news, daily video, help and trade setup chat. If that is what you're interested in, go ahead and contact me in the pinned comment of the free channel by clicking my name. You can also click these links for more information. And if you are interested in a lifetime 15% trading fee discount, including $5,000 in trading rewards, sign up to any of these links to BitGet, BingX or BitInx to go ahead and check that out. Let's dive on into the video. So taking a look at the market data, 24 hour liquidations and volume, 24 hour volume is sitting at 111 billion. This is down 42%. 24 hour liquidations at 86 million down 77%. Of the 86 million in liquidations, 37 have come from long positions and a massive 49 million have come from short positions. Taking a brief look at recent news, we did have the Fed uh, Reserve Jerome Powell test uh, testimony. They talked about inflation. They talked about potential futures interest rate cuts. They talked about how everything was tracking along. The general consensus was very neutral. They said that they are still looking to reduce interest rates. However, inflation is not where they wanted to be to go ahead and and do so. So we can expect po possibly a few more months of interest rate pauses before we do see that eventual reduction. Moving over to the DXY, the DXY is sitting more or less where it has been for the last couple days. We do have our major downtrending diagonal resistance we are still watching. If we break above here, that is going to be incredibly bearish for the broader markets and we could see risk assets drop considerably. Until then, we are under a downtrend and we are expecting downward continuation over the coming months. This is going to be bullish for risk assets such as Bitcoin and S&P 500 and traditional assets. Watching that very closely, again, interest rate data, inflation data, and anything that is really leading for inflation is going to play a massive role in determining whether DXY moves on the short term and potentially on the higher time frame as well. Moving over to the S&P 500, looking very strong over here. We've got our two targets at 5,800 and 6,000. While we remain above our prior high, we are expecting directional continuations upwards. If we do drop below this prior high, we would expect a correction resulting in a high time frame reversal to develop and that being the end of this macro uptrend. Until then, looking very bullish, expecting much higher. That is it for our short term uptrend updates on the broader markets. Let's go ahead and jump into Bitcoin. Before we do, a quick summary of what we're going to be discussing. So in today's video, we are going over the total and the total altcoin market, discussing why the markets are very, very close to potential a local bottom before we see that next move upwards, both for the total and particularly for altcoins. We'll also be discussing a very important indicator on the weekly chart, which is the baseline of the Ichimoku cloud and discussing why it is signifying a possible bottom and again, a potential reversal point. And then we'll be jumping over to the short-term price action discussing exactly what needs to happen for the price action to continue higher, the key levels of confidence and the areas of support we'd be watching for if we were to see another pullback. That is it guys, let's get into the video. A quick word from BitGet, BitUnix and BingX before we do. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two exchanges we use on this channel, BitGet and BingX. 
So which exchange should you sign up to? If you look to the right hand side of the screen, you're gonna see the list of differences in relation to KYC requirements and the countries these exchanges offer services to. The first link down below being the BitGet link and the second link down below being the BingX link. No matter which link you sign up to, you're going to get up to 15% discounts on your trading fees, up to 5,000 US dollars in trading rewards, and of course, you'll get access to every single MegaWow exclusive bonus campaign we run on these exchanges. Alongside that, BitGet and BingX are incredibly similar. They are both ranked top 10 in terms of trading volume. They both have extensive liquidity pools and market pairs offering up to 125x leverage. And most importantly, they both offer protection funds for their users to protect you against any third party hacks. So get started now and support the channel by clicking the links below. Thanks for listening. Okay, Megwell team, let's go ahead and dive right in, starting on the total market cap. So what we can see between these two charts, we have the total market cap on the left, and we have the total three market cap, which is essentially the entirety of the market, excluding Bitcoin and excluding Ethereum on the right-hand side, a good representation of altcoins as a whole. What we can see is we can see both of these charts have seen significant pullbacks since those March highs, resulting in corrections to prior areas of high time frame structural support. We can see those levels marked out by these horizontal levels on the chart. Furthermore, during this correction, we've developed a channel formation which is a potential bullish reversal formation. The thing about channel formations are they are actually inherently downtrends. So we're technically in a downtrend while we remain in this channel. However, the representation of this channel indicates eventually we will see a overall trend reversal and that downtrend will likely come to an end. That is not a confirmation. There is no certainty in that, but there's a high degree of probability that is the case from what we see from structural patterns historically. So taking a look at our channels over here, what we can see to validate as channels, we do have four points. We have point number one, we have point number two, we have point number three, and we have point number four. So we're looking for five points to validate a channel. We have five points on one side. We're looking for our fifth point at the top and three points, uh, sorry, three points on one side and two points on the other side. We have the same similar formation here on the total three, one, two, three, and four. Again, looking for a fifth point on the top side to validate that potential breakout. If we do take a look at the movements between the channel, we have very key levels. So the midline of the channel, we can see acts as a trigger point for continuations to the range high and the range low of the channel. What I mean by that is we can see we find support on the midline, we continue to the range high. We reject from the midline, we continue to the range low. We break through the midline, we continue to the range high. We break through the midline, we continue to the range low. So we do have a trigger point on that trend line over here, which can determine directional moves for the market. We can see on the total exactly the same thing on the total three. We have a midline, we break below the midline, we continue to range low. We break above midline, we continue to range high. We break below midline, we continue to range low. Exactly the same structural formation developing over here. What we can notice here for altcoins as well is the RSI is more or less finding a local bottom. This is going to be our deviation range we marked out many, many months ago for a potential reaccumulation for altcoins. We are expecting the altcoin market to continue to gain strength moving forward if we do break through this downtrend on the RSI. That would indicate a positive momentum shift, suggesting that during this entire cluster of price action where momentum has been moving downwards, we have finally flipped positive again. We're finally seeing some strength again that could facilitate a possible reversal. So we're looking for a break of that RSI trend line to signify that this downtrend is possibly coming to an end. If we break above this local high on the RSI, that would tell us we are very likely to continue through that resistance and potentially even higher. If we do take measured moves of these channels, we can apply the distance in length to the breakout point. We can see that would respectively take us over that key level of prior yearly resistance and send us up into that next leg upwards. So for the total two and for the total, we are at a incredibly important support level as this is an area of which we will likely need to find a bottom to commence the next leg upwards. However, if we break below, we will see considerable corrections to the next areas of high time frame support. That could be another 20 to 30% pullback for altcoins and another, what is it, four 
hundred billion dollars wiped off the total market cap if that does correct. So a very important level we should be watching out for. So keep an eye on that. Overall, more likely that we're reaching an area of local support than we are not. Let's move over to the macro chart for Bitcoin now. There is one particular indicator I do want to discuss, and this is going to be the baseline of the Ichimoku cloud on the weekly chart. And let's go ahead and get rid of absolutely everything on this chart except that baseline to make everything very simple. The baseline of the Ichimoku cloud historically has been a very, very uh, important indicator in determining the overall strength, volatility, and general direction of the trend. What we can see historically is generally when we break above Okay, let's go back. Let's go back to like 2016 or something. When we generally break above the baseline, so we go into our bear market over here, broke below it, we go into a bear market, we broke above it, we enter that bull market, we generally remain above the baseline until we create a high. Eventually, we break below the baseline, validating we're entering a high time frame downtrend. We remain under the baseline until we break back above it, entering a high time frame uptrend. We break below it, we enter a high time frame downtrend, we break above it entering a high time frame uptrend. Of course, there are scenarios such as the COVID-19 crash where we did break above the baseline but continued down. There are always going to be outliers, but exceptions do not prove the general rule. Again, breaking above the baseline, we saw a macro continuation into an uptrend. We broke below the baseline into a macro downtrend. Breaking above, macro uptrend, breaking, breaking below, macro downtrend, etc, etc. So, more than not, more often than not, when we do see a break of the baseline, except this scenario, basically the only scenario where we saw sideways price action, more often than not, when we break below the baseline, we do see a directional move, whether that is sustained on a monthly chart or whether or not a weekly directional move, we generally see a weekly directional move at least of significant proportion. We're talking at least double digits in directional moves, um, upwards or downwards, depending on whether or not we break below or we sustain above. So this is a very key level as it acts as almost like a verification point or a confirmation point for the overall trend. If we were to sustain underneath this level and break back below, and this is sitting at a price point of around 55.8, we would likely see an extended correction downwards for Bitcoin. That could take us into that next area of support. We would likely see the total two market cap or the total market cap drop below our support level into our next support. We would likely see the altcoin market cap lose its base support and as well drop into that next support level. So it's a very important validation point we're watching. Of course, we have five days remaining on that weekly candle close. However, on the flip side, while we do remain above this level, it is not only a trigger point, but it is actually a key level of crucial support. We have seen instances in the past where we have bounced from the baseline and seen directional continuations upwards. So while we sustain above the baseline, it is telling us that we have a degree of support around this level and we can actually validate that area of support with our high time frame horizontal levels. So a very, very important level to watch out for guys. Watch that on the weekly chart. Let's jump down into a smaller time frame. So what we can see here is the short term price action for Bitcoin. We're still on the daily chart, but we'll break it down to a short term. Let's start off by our key trigger points. So for the bearish scenario, what would need to happen is Bitcoin is going to need to lose the 50 to 53,000 support. This is our current support level. So our support level is a few percent away and our next high time frame resistance is about equal distances away. This is going to be our key level of support. If we drop below this level, it is very likely Bitcoin is going to come down to that 44k region as we just depicted on the macro chart over here on that weekly chart over here on the brave new coin liquid index what we can see on the short term that is going to be that next directional move if bitcoin is unable to sustain above 53 to 50 thousand dollars we can see again if we drop below here with the vrpv gap building up into significant support at that region and that will potentially be a bottom for bitcoin if we do reach our level however support is support until it is not the 53 to fifty thousand dollar region is a area of support and we have to consider it as such and that is what i've been saying we have to trade level by level right now once this area is reached, and which it has been reached, we would expect bounces from this region. The big question is, are the bounces we see going to be strong enough 
to validate continuations upwards. And that is what we're going to be discussing. What will the buyers need to do to properly put the bulls back in control? The first level the buyers are going to need to clear is going to be, if we jump down to a small time frame, let's go to a 12 hour chart, is going to be the level of resistance we have been challenging now for looking to around five days. This level of resistance is going to be the 58.3k region. You can see we've rejected from it. We went back down and we are now potentially rejecting from it. Again, we're retesting as we speak. This is going to be the prior sell side liquidity of the prior correction underneath the 64k region before we see that extended correction to 53k. So if we want to see a directional shift, we need to clear this level of resistance. Resistance. This is going to be a level of resistance. I would not be aping into longs right here at resistance. Wait for that resistance to break. If we break through that resistance, it is highly likely we push into that $60,000 region, which is going to be the 50 EMA. And if we break the 50 EMA, it is highly likely we see a proper trend reversal and we see continuations into 63,000. And that brings us to our next point. The next key level of resistance the bulls need to break above is going to be that 63.8 to 63.1 resistance. If we drag that resistance out, we can see massive rejections from that point. When we broke above it, we saw directional continuations to range high. We saw when we broke below it, we saw directional continuations to the lows. And therefore, this is going to be a key resistance or a key trigger point for directional continuations to the range high. So for us to see targets up around 70,000 again, we need to break through 63.8 to 63.1. For us to retest that level in the first place, we need to get above 58.3, the current resistance we are challenging until then. The downside risk for another sweep of these lows, another correction into these lows, sweep that liquidity is very, very high. So we do have to be aware of that as a possibility. Overall, guys, the charts aren't looking terrible. Again, we can see some key levels on the uh, on the weekly have been broken. For example, if we do take up our pie cycle indicators, we have seen some key historical patterns break, which is, of course, bad. However, in context of the mass accumulation, it was only expected that these large moving average based indicators as a consequence of massively long accumulation, or should I say massively long consolidation, would eventually pivot inwards and the price would eventually break down from them. That doesn't take away from the significance of them. They are still significant. They are still very, very bearish that we have broken down. But we cannot expect to see a traditional bear market where we're going to see negative 50, 60 percent because we haven't seen a traditional bull market. So what this is, isn't a all time high for Bitcoin. It isn't a macro top for Bitcoin. It is a local top for Bitcoin, meaning it will likely provide as a top for an extended period of time before we see that level break again. It is not going to be a top equivalent to the tops, which we saw at the top of prior bull markets, where we saw a year long 80% downtrend. It would not make any sense from an economic perspective with us moving into interest rate reductions. It wouldn't make any sense from a date range trend perspective, and we're even looking at potential dates between bottoms and tops, and it wouldn't even make sense from a structural perspective with regards to where we are now. If we really want to talk about macro continuations downwards, Bitcoin would theoretically need to lose that major 44,000 level of support before we really start to see overall death for Bitcoin. Until then, it is still looking macro bullish. So short term bearish at the moment while we remain underneath this resistance. We could see corrections downwards, okay? If we break above this resistance, become short-term optimistic for a continuation higher. If we break through 64K, we become very, very bullish again for directional continuations. If we break through 72K, we become very, very bullish for macro continuations. If we lose 50,000, become high time frame bearish for uh, continuations downwards. That is how you should be looking at this from a level by level basis. We're going to wrap up the video there, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day. We'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video. Cheers and see you then.